Hello, this is Mary Beth at Stencil Girl Products. Thanks for watching another episode of Ask Me Anything. This month, we have a really good question from Carolyn Wagner. Carolyn is wondering about mounting pieces. She um, has observed that I often work on watercolor or multimedia paper, and she's asking, I mean, what do you do? You fall in love with a piece, and then you want to present it in some way. So what do you do? Do you frame all these, or, or what do you do exactly? So I thought I would cover that today, and hopefully it'll help some of you that might also be wondering the same thing. And let me start by telling a little story. Back in the day, yeah, I did used to frame everything. I was just, um, I don't know, in the beginning, I had made a ton of pieces on this watercolor board and I wanted to present them. <laughs> I had all these ideas about framing and I wanted it to be like a deeper frame with the spacer and all this. And it was of course too expensive to have it done custom. So I involved John and we just worked our tails off to make that happen. And it turned out to not be the best idea for two reasons. One, it was really labor intensive <laughs> and we're not professional framers and we had to buy a lot of equipment. And anyway, the second reason is that if you are doing shows or if you're moving your work around, transporting the frames, you know, it can be a dicey deal you know, depending, you can easily scratch them. And anyway, I ultimately, ultimately decided that I would rather just work on deep cradled boards that were ready to be hung. And that way I could do that. But I have always matted work so that I could have like a bin of matted work also you know, with me that would allow more economical options for people who wanted to also buy my work. And I thought it was very important to always present my work in mats that would easily go into store-bought frames. In other words, somebody didn't have to buy my matted work and then go get a custom frame made because I didn't want to make it more expensive for them. So, and I work in squares. <laughs> so I always use these mats from Dick Blick. These are by Bainbridge and I really like them a lot because what it gives you is it's a square format but it's in a standard 11 by 14 size and I've been buying these for years and they're the quality just can't be beat. Real high quality. So um, here's another one with an 8 by 10 set into an 11 by 14 option. So those are quite nice if you are willing to buy a more expensive mat. If you're looking for uh, more economical mats, I have found a very good supplier on Amazon called Golden State, and I've linked them up below here so you can go check out their offerings. But I've been buying, uh, they call this their package deal where you get these are five by seven mats and so it's a group of five by seven mats with backing board and you even get a little cellophane bag to put them in for when you're going to be selling them so that's a nice option too but there's one more way to do this actually two more ways depending on what you have so let's say you're working on paper piece on paper get a board that you want to mount the piece on. Get a board that is slightly smaller than your art, okay? And I'll tell you why. You wanna glue this to the board and have a little border and then you'll trim it up after gluing. That gets the best result in the real, you know, to the edge seal of the glue. So how I would do this, if I was getting ready to glue this, I would get a nice, quality clear glue I would use gel medium by golden uh, regular gel medium or I've even used the um, tacky glue any, anything that's going to dry clear a nice reasonably thick reasonably thick which is why I like the tacky glue so what I do is I put the glue down I brush it on here and I take a brayer and brayer it out and then I brush it on the back and brayer it out then I put this down and get a 
white or just some clean piece of paper and put that here. Flip it upside down and then put a bunch of books on top of it and really let it dry. Don't get impatient. Let it dry. Several hours overnight is great. And then when it's dry, get a craft knife. New blade, brand new blade is going to work best and trim it away. And you will just have a beautifully mounted piece on wood. Um, so I do like doing that quite a lot. And then when people buy your work, they're just ready to put it right on the wall. And lastly, let's say you've worked on something that is a slightly rigid surface. Could even be you worked on a piece of mat board or you worked on a canvas board or you worked on um, just a flat panel. You can go to the hardware store and buy these molding strips very inexpensively, cut them down and glue them to the back with a wire. And you hang this on the wall. These are a couple. And it looks like they're almost floating off the wall. I love this presentation for uh, rigid board work. It's a very easy way to have a more economical presentation of that work. I hope you learned something from this and it gave you ideas. I will link up the supplies I talked about below and please add your questions down below because Carolyn is going to get a gift certificate for Stencil Girl products and I would love to consider your questions. So ask me anything and I'll see you next month.